Okay, guys, good morning to all of you. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, give me an L and C or thumbs up. Or oh, quickly now, spoil me with all the emoticons. All right, the likes, the love, the care, the haha, and the wow. Okay, of course, you're going to cry. You can go ahead. <laughs> all right, if you hate me, it's all right. Then just don't stay in this Zoom session or this Facebook session, okay? Now, once again, guys, this morning itself is going to be very interactive because there's loads and loads of information that we need to cover today, okay? Now, every time when I say this statement itself, someone say, oh, Cal, again, say loads and loads of stuff. But don't you realize that every time when I do MAO, it's at least one and a half hour. And I mean, seriously, I spent about one hour narrating what's happening around the whole world, okay? And of course, some people like it, some people don't like it. So some people actually tell me, Kel, you know what? Because of your boring uh, morning, uh, this uh, market overview, which I can read on my own, I always uh, watch, wait until your MAO is over. Then I will go to your Facebook page and look at the last 10 minutes or so. Okay. But I say once again, you can do that because that is your right. But uh, you should know that my style is that if periodically, if I see anything, that uh, I felt that it's going to be interesting to share now, example, then I will share it. So if you actually, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, um, time my sharing, then I can tell you that for sure, it's all right, some of the essence will be lost in between. All right, it means that some of the things I may say in the earlier part, you may be lost. And if you just concentrate on the technical side to get a quick one, you might not be able to get the best of it itself. Okay, so this is something that I need to share with you, yeah? So, uh, but again, it's up to individual, but some of you are very busy, so you want to like make it fast and simple, uh, that is your right also, right? Everybody's entitled to their own way of doing anything, okay? All right, so I make sure all is clear on this. Let's start our MAO right now this morning. Now, this morning MAO is going to be a little bit twisting because why? Now, for people who um, believe one plus one equals two uh, in the finance, I mean, for mathematics, it's correct. But if you put at one plus one equals two for financial market, right? I can guarantee you it will not work at all. Because if it work, you won't be listening to me. You'll be not making trillions of dollars every single moment. Because why? Because that is one plus one equals two. So as long as we study hard, memorize the formula, we should be able to score and make the trillions and the gazillion every single moment. But the financial market itself is a place whereby it's a, in a way, it's like a better word itself, it's a dog eat dog world. So if everybody is going to be trained one plus one equals two, then can I ask you one very important question? A logical question is, then who is going to lose money to the other person? Because if one plus two, one plus one equals two, and it's a correct answer, then if everybody learned the same thing, then who is going to lose to the other person? Do you understand what I just said? If you understand what I just said, can you understood right now? Because to me, it's all right, when I train my students, right, it's get, it gets a little bit difficult when I actually explain certain things and I tell them that you need to manifest and you must see what's going to happen next, okay? But a lot of people say, no, why am I supposed to manifest and think what will happen next when the one plus one equals two? <laughs> you, you understand my point? So that's why this coming Saturday, Saturday, this coming Saturday Sunday, Monday, I'm going to have my PTP session. It's a pro trader program. And I can tell you this is all right. These 31 people that's joining this, this weekend, they're going to be very, they'll open their eyes again because it's going to be really shocking. And they will see that how this world really, really works. Okay. And it's really incredible. And you just need to really do that. So that's the reason why I always tell you this. The reason why uh, Christian Ronaldo and um, this Lionel Mercy are such a solid, solid footballers because they can see one step ahead. That means, an example, I give an example. Like, as I'm a Christian and Ronaldo, before, before his teammate passed him the ball, he already ran to the place that the ball will likely be going. You understand my point? Because he, all his muscle memory has already remembered how his teammate will kick the ball. You understand my point? And he will run to that place. So when the ball really floats, he will be there. And that's the reason why he's able to score those great goals in the, mark, in, in the game. Right? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. All right. So that's why you compare to our local players, right? You realize that it's not that fantastic because they don't really understand their own players that well. And of course, the teammate, the ball delivery must be very consistent. So if my teammate's ball delivery is always any whole how, then it's going to be very difficult. So that's the difference between real professional and the top professionals, okay? 
All right, so get an idea now. Okay, let's zoom back to today's topic, all right. Now, today is the 6th of July, Wednesday. Okay, the question is this. Confused, Cal, confused. Why? You, US, you say US crude itself, right? If it goes up, it will cause inflation, yeah? And then that will cause the economy to have problem. Yes. Then why yesterday crude oil pl price plunged by this... Uh, 10%, right? 10% is a lot, you know that? Oh, that's a good news for all of us, okay? For those drivers, in fact. Then why, why did the stock market came off? And now everybody is talking about recession. What the hell is going on? Okay. Now, what you are saying here is how it's not wrong, but you are actually confused because you actually put the short-term and long-term together. Okay, let me explain to you what. U.S. crude yesterday go down. It's a short-term momentum that what happened yes, yesterday, last night. Recession is what will likely be happening and hit global economy in the later stage itself. Okay? But Wall Street is a lovely place that they love to put everything together to confuse you. So you must understand how it works. Is that now they are saying that, okay, because there's a recession coming in, we've been telling you for longest of time, finally they sort of agree on this, then therefore they will likely be lesser people purchasing stuff, lesser buyers, buying purchasing power reduced, right? You understand my point? Hence, therefore, they are speculating that the crude oil, the consumption will drop, even though we know that July and August and September, like we chat on yesterday's market, yesterday as an MAO, we talked about that and they feel that way. So actually it's a speculation. It's not real. It's just a speculation. You understand my point? So you think of this now, if the crude oil price has come down, then naturally the inflation worry has came down. So naturally it's not right, okay? The stock market will be a little bit happier because that means that Federal Reserve maybe will really has to reduce their rate hikes. So you see that this is the jigsaw puzzle here as well that make it a bit confusing. But as long as what I've been telling you, just follow the chart, right? Make your life easier. Don't compare, contrast. Don't tell me that apple and orange put together itself will become a bigger fruit and stuff like that. Like some people ask me, say, Kel, uh, we should follow Nasdaq or follow Dow Jones or follow the crude oil. You don't need to follow anybody. You just, whatever you trade, follow that chart. That will be the best thing to do. So today I will talk, talk to you about the crude oil market very in depth on this. And we'll talk about the current inflation. And of course, Europe, as I told you already, right? In my opinion, Europe is in a very severe uh, problem uh, situation and I, I felt that right this is going to be worse in the months to come right I'm actually very very bearish with this uh, Europe and I've been very vocal on this and of course we have what um, Bridgewater Ray Dalio hedge fund selling about 10.4 billion dollars on the market so yesterday definitely is a happier man obviously after years of getting it wrong <laughs> okay let's go disclaimer apply as usual my friends end of the day your job is to follow uh, follow the whatever I share and then make some money out of it. My job is to give you my best narration of how I see the market. Now, end of the day, you have your right to make your final, final decision, yeah? But do your risk management properly, okay? Now, before we go into the market, I just want to share this with you, right? This is a clip that happened in Giant Hypermarket, which is very near my where I stay at Tampanese. All right, so what happened was that apparently uh, this guy... This guy, the one in the jacket, was wanting to enter the supermarket. But the security guard said, no, you didn't put on masks. You cannot go in. So, of course, obviously, I think some words was used and probably some words was not used the right way. And then the guy came out and started to howl punches at the security guard. Now, of course, definitely whoever threw the first piece is always wrong, no matter what happened. All right. Then after that, what happened? You can see that people actually stepped in. And really, they didn't have any pushing. They said, step in and say, why are you doing this? And why are you that punching game and stuff? And I, for me, I, I felt that that was good because this is really making me safe. I feel safe with this. All right. And of course, the rest started to come in and more people, not people, lah, but just come in to just listen and hear the stories. And then after that, they really, you know, have to pin in to one side while waiting for the police to come. But my point is this, okay? I'm not saying who's right, who's wrong right now. I mean, putting your first punch onto the person itself is always wrong. But it's just that now people are really stepping up and really, you know, come and see justice being served or at least being maintained. I think this is really very good. I mean, if you compare what happened in um, 
one of the place in China recently about the four ladies was being really walled up by some guys, some triad guys here in front of China. Okay, all right. So it was so bad that, you know, it, when I look at the video, it's like, it feels so dangerous to have my daughter even going out at night. So all this thing itself, right, tells you that Singapore is a very safe place. And hence, therefore, I give salute to what's happening. And I really think that we should really get united. But of course, must be the right reason, yeah? So this is something that I want to share today just to start off this uh, this morning itself. All right, United Singapore. <laughs> Indeed, Tundin. All right. Okay, let's go back to our usual joke of the day. Ha <laughs> ha. Now the end is near, the end is near, the end is near. What near is this? The thing is the earnings season. Now do note, while well, July will be the second quarter earnings season, which will start um, later this week and next week, especially next week. Now, we all know that, right, okay, the first quarter, most of the company still beat estimate, but they didn't give much uh, providence or either they didn't give any much more uh, forward, all right, about what may happen, right? Some company decided not even to give. So I am standing by my, my, my belief that likely, help, likely chance that we're going to see the market okay, tapering off a little bit because I don't think the earnings will be any way fantastic. Because if the earnings is good, is it good, right? Then you wouldn't have all this problem now sprouting among the market itself. So I felt that there is more downside to go. So that's why the earnings season will be a thing to watch, okay? So now you can understand why like, this one time richest Singapore tycoon, right? This guy lost 17 billion US dollar in one of the tech biggest wipeout recently. Yes, indeed, right? He was one of the richest guy at one stage itself, okay? And then he just lost it, 17 billion US dollar value. Now, of course, the profit came in also because of the share price and the, the crypto, <laughs> uh, the valuation. But of course, all these things is really, can, you can see like, the, the changing of hands is so far, so rapid, right? Then, of course, in Singapore, right? In Singapore, we, we also know that um, our food prices is going up, and that's why I talk about inflation. But more important, uh, as I said before, that even our neighbors are suffering. So Malaysia recently says that the cost of eating outside could potentially rise by 25 to 40% this month, say by the Malaysian F&B. So think about this, even though Malaysia has the resources and they have all the things, right? But they still have to, to have to accept the depletion of the currency and also the food stuff. So it's the same thing over there in Singapore, which we also have this problem. And with the worst of us, we do not have the natural resources. So when I saw this, I was shocked, okay? I know that our current rate now, Singapore dollar is one to three, 3.1, 3.2, I really cannot remember, but around there. So apparently this guy compared that this, this cabbage oil, um, okay, basically cost Singapore about $11.20, but now for Malaysia, it costs as much as 42.65 ringgit. Well, even I say we do 11.20 times 3.3, it's still about 33 to 34 dollars at best, but yet, 34 ringgit, yeah. But now this place at 42.65 ringgit. Wow. So I check on my with my friends in Malaysia and they say, Cal, yes, indeed, the prices in Malaysia is really going higher and it's getting a little bit uncomfortable already. And that's the reason why there was some little uh, interesting article saying that they tell the people in Malaysia to probably consider to eat lesser, <laughs> okay, or try to eat something alternative. <laughs> All right. I mean, to me, it's like it was a, I find it amazing. La. I mean, for a minister to come up with that thought statement, I find it very amazing. It's just like, you must have to meet it, right? But I find this is my personal view, okay? Okay, so it's kind of a, a lurid, huh, on this here. All right, so of course, we in Singapore, oh my goodness, in Singapore, we have our COE prices still going up, not $110,000. That's the reason why I tell my wife I'm not going to get a car. I'd rather rent a car for time being. It was this ridiculous what piece of paper. All right, although it's yours to keep, but... No, la, uh, this is really nuts, okay? And of course now, right, we are having seven months coming in for the Chinese, right? <laughs> okay, so maybe this time around you have to write a letter down and down and say that, okay, because of the increment, that's why you need to reduce. But I tell you this, uh, you, shouldn't in, you shouldn't reduce, you should in fact increase it. Why? Then you need more help. Then you need more help to get you more stuff. Maybe a little bit of four numbers or seven numbers will tie you over, okay? But this is terrible. Really, this is really terrible. And I remember very clearly the last time when this happened, when I talked about Joss paper going up, right, was back in 2020. Do you remember that? For those who have been, been, been following me, me on MAO, right? MAO has been quite a while already. It's just that last time it's not so regular and the time frame is shorter. 
I remember telling you, right, about DOS paper going hard. And the time itself was a very one point where the market after that started to come down quite rapidly. Just to check if you, how many of you remember? If you remember, it sounds like KTREM. If you remember that I did cover that whenever the DOS papers start to go up in prices, the stock market itself usually come down a bit. If you remember, KREM right now. Now, anyway, uh, for you guys, it's all right, just to say this once again on live, I'm thinking, my, uh, this is my own Facebook, Han Xiao Rong is my Chinese name, and I might I call myself Kel, although my longer name is Kelvin. But the thing is this, if you like, you know, like to be part of my Facebook, do understand this, I only accept my own students or my business associates, okay? Uh, I do not accept other people to join my Facebook. So if you are not a student of mine or you're not my associate, I don't add Facebook. So the same thing yourself, if you receive any messages from Facebook and say that it's me, uh, most likely it's not me because I don't really talk much on Facebook through Messenger. Yeah, take note of that. Oh, okay. no one remember that or because uh, it's uh, or your or your fault. <laughs> okay, never mind, I move on then. All right. Now, to talk about my charting skill is all right. I remember I tell you guys that I did a mathematics formula. I, I remember that I said this to you guys. I said that there will be a very interesting uh, movement on the Dow Jones when it goes up to this level, 31,810, 870. I said that if the Dow Jones go to 870, likelihood we may see a peak, right? And then, of course, what happened now, the Dow Jones really came down about 1,000 points since that day. So that means on the 28th of, Jan 20th of June, which is just like about a week ago, I gave a forecast, I give you a number that the, the Dow Jones have a peak at 31,870. And today, or last night, in fact, the Dow Jones came down to a low of 30,000, I think about 380, I think, yesterday, yeah? So that means that the market actually dropped about 1,500 points from where I gave the call. So again, this is all live sharing, live, live sharing, yeah? So congratulations to those who make some money from the market. And of course, yesterday during my afternoon special MAO, I remember telling you that, right, okay, that uh, likelihood is all right, OXY and crude oil is good to buy. So I did mention to you that in the long term, it's all right, it's good to buy crude. But of course, yesterday when the crude oil plunged, okay, uh, we got stopped out in a way. And then after that, we went short in the market and we, did, we went back to collect back at $98. Now to me, it's all $95 to $98 is a pretty good price to buy some crude. So this morning, some people text me about my view on crude, right? So let, let me write it down for you. I felt that $96 to $98 is a very good price to collect some crude. But of course, you can go lower, but just as if you feel that I think it's a good figure to begin with. And for OXY, right, I already tell you um, $55 to $58 is also a good price to collect some OXY. Okay? So I already given you some of the numbers here. It's all right. Now, of course, if the market go lower, right, to me, uh, it's a better opportunity to even buy even more, if you ask me. But of course, again, uh, people who really um, don't want to do, uh, disagree on this statement, it's all right. It's up to you to decide because end of the day, I'm just sharing with you my personal view, yeah? So you can make your own final decision, okay? Okay, so that is my two numbers for you. And of course, just now, moments ago, it's all right. We had a very nice trade live in a way uh, because I was, was online just now. So I was telling my students live earlier, just moments ago, about half an hour ago, that I expect the hang, the, I expect this, the Hang Seng to drop all the way down to 21,550 because that's a moving average 30, okay? Then of course, um, that time the market was still trading about uh, 21,627. All right, so I was expecting another 70 points drop. And um, what happened is that, okay, after a short while, because you can see the timestamp, yeah? When I gave the call itself, right, it was about 10.26 a.m., okay, 10.26 a.m. Then by 10.44, the market already hit my target. So which means that within about 20 minutes, right, we have profited quite a bit of money in the market. So you can see that all these are genuine profit. And this is what I do to help my students to make money. So again, guys, this is live sharing because you cannot fake all this because it's live. So 
compared to other people as well, right, who will give um, views and stuff like that, I think to lead a student to success is more important than not, yeah? Okay, all right. Anyway, that is what to share with you. Um, Kareem, is there any news that made the crude oil drop so much? Yes, I'll be talking about that very shortly. So stay tuned huh, for us. Um, by the way, we are now looking at the Hang Seng to drop further. If the Hang Seng can drop further to 21,410, that will be lovely, okay? That will be very lovely. Yeah, indeed itself, right? This is something that uh, our students are watching it and hopefully this number can come in the later stage. Yeah? Okay, let's continue. All right, now the current figure right now, right? You can see on the fear and greed, is still staying between the extreme fear and fear. Now, the thing is this, the market has been rebounding pretty strongly whenever it hit 30,400 area. It seems that there's a very imaginary, they have a very powerful imaginary or very powerful invisible to be correct, the line, I mean, support over there. Whenever the market go to 30,400, it just bounces, 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 very strong. So I don't know how to recite this as fear, but never mind. So this is the number you can see right now that uh, we are actually firming nicely above the 24, 25 area. So only if the market really come down to the extreme fear level, where about maybe we hit about 18 to maybe or 15, uh, then maybe we can see the real bottoming out effect. All right. And the moment now, right, I just cannot give you the call for bottom. In fact, it's more like sell on rallies instead. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at some of the US economic calendar first. Okay, to begin with tonight, tonight, yeah, we have the ISM non-manufacturing PMI. Now, the previous number was 55.9, and today the forecast is 54.3. So that means there's a revision towards the downside, all right? Some expectation of downside. The jobs opening also we expect some reduction because I think that nowadays people really, the job opening is not that fantastic. So take note of that. Now, if these two numbers are down, which I suspect it will be, then likelihood the sell that will add even more pressure on the current take of a potential recession in America. Now, on Thursday at 2 a.m., which is later part of the day of Wednesday, which you, if I take note of that, right, it means that later, of, I mean, later part of today at 2 a.m., yeah, Thursday morning, we have the FOMC meeting, meeting minutes, okay? And of course, that will potentially let us know what is the view of the FOMC meeting last month. And of course, if the, the thing is pretty clear that looking at 50 to 75 basis point, it's still aligned. If they say that, no, 75 basis point is confirmed, then the market may shake a little bit, yeah? So take note of that. Now, because of the shortened week itself, right? We have the ADP tomorrow, all right? ADP tomorrow, I told you, the number is expecting to be higher. That's interesting. And of course, on Friday, we will have the initial jobless claim, which the number is expecting to be lower, which is a bit different from the ADP numbers, okay? So you can see now the ISM manufacturing data, the numbers have been quite consistent the last few months, the last few weeks, sorry. So I suspect it should be the same. Anything lower than that, let's say keep about 49, that will really, really rock the market, okay? So watch out for all these numbers later today. Now, of course, the Dow Jones has been really incredible, the Dow Jones, yeah? Yes, the, <clears throat> excuse me. The Dow Jones yesterday, when it opens, right, it just slammed down all the way down, down by 400 points at one stage itself. So you can understand that. But after that, the market just found a base at 30,400. I told you, right, it's a very incredible base. So write it down, 30,400 as a base. Okay, write it down. Right, once the market stopped there, the market just steadily, 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 steadily push it up as if that their job is to just make sure the market don't fall that much. Very incredible. Of course, the NASDAQ and S&P 500 recovered to be positive, but you know, the thing is this, we are having a recession right now, a potential recession. So what gave them the audacity or the rational reason to be buying? Hmm, okay, so like I told you, right, there are two reasons to that. Number one, it could be the petroitic uh, market rally. Now do not, I said that before, or I said that again, now, usually after the, the day after, the day before 4th of July, the day after 4th of July, usually there will be some rally. So we actually saw that, okay? Number two is that, right, remember the pension fund, $320 billion is supposed to go in the market, right? I feel that yesterday they came in again to buy some. So overall, it's all right. Usually this buying should end about two, three days. So we, let's say we use it as a form of guidance. Like last week, we have the rally before Independence Day. We had a bit of buying yesterday when the market came off. And the day before was the same thing. So likelihood, uh, this $320 billion likelihood, in my opinion, may have finished, okay? 
So I don't know whether I'm right or wrong, but at least on the way I look at the chart itself, it doesn't show me any form of weakness at the moment, despite we are full of negative news in the economic front. All right, so what we have for the correspondent, it says that the stock stage a big comeback on Tuesday with S&P 500 finishing slightly higher after erasing 2% loss. That's true. So let's just go through slowly on some of the information first. Now, first of all, the market looks to recover after a rough first half of the year, which we had. All right, the S&P lost more than 20%, right? Remember? Okay, fair enough. But the thing is this, yesterday the 10-year treasury yield and the two-year treasury yield actually inverted again, right? The five-year and the two years also inverted yesterday. So the question is, this is a very strong indication that there will be a recession. And if you remember, it happened back in March. So again, this is happening again. So March was once, now it happened again in June, uh, July now. So which means that if it, whether it's three months, six months or nine months to, to get a recession, we are likely to see that likely by the end of the year, if not early next year. So recession is definitely on the cards because you have this sort of thing happening. It's a very strong track record, okay? So of course, the economic growth stock came down yesterday, but of course, you can see that this like, uh, like Caterpillar was down, but and this uh, Freeport, McMoran also down. But again, again, because of the NASDAQ and technology shares going up, right, that changes it everything. So what happened on the side is that right, even though there may be potential recession, but still with the with the now inflation coming down, just a crude oil coming down, the buyers feel that right, since crude oil is coming down, let's just go and buy some tech shares that's cheap right now. So that's the reason why it's happening. Now, do note once again, I said it's shortened holiday week, right? So we have the uh, the data coming up, and apparently it's all right, you know, the economies are all expecting numbers to be lower from 390 to 250, that's a big drop, yeah, FYI. And of course, we also have Joe Biden now, whether will he roll back on the Trump era tech reef on China goods. Now, likelihood, right, he'll do it by today, all right? If you want to get the deal up and sell, right, he'll do it by today. But again, there will be some repercussion on this problem here, in my belief, because that means that, right, a lot of things they have to adjust accordingly, and this will just only likely be a more like a news on the noise news, but the implementation is going to be very tough. Okay, so you must understand that on the side note itself, right, less than a month ago, traders were pricing in a cycle that the benchmark Federal Reserve will go to about 4%, right? Okay, now it's only 1.5 to 1.75, now we are only there, but people are pricing in. But because of now the all the things coming in, right, now they are expecting to be 3.3%, which is still far from the current 1.75. So which means that the market need to raise interest rate 50 basis point minimally from next few months onwards, or you can jump to 75 basis point, then slowly do 50, 50, 50 all the way. So all these tells you that, right, the market is expecting recession coming in and inflation will already slow down after this hiking. And of course, commodity price will fall while the Federal Reserve rate hike, or rate cut, sorry. All right, so all these things is what is the long haul. Lah. But to me, it's all right. Yes, inflation will go down, that's for sure. Commodity or fall, I really don't buy. I don't buy that. I think commodity prices will go up instead, because when that happens and stuff, right, there'll be more demand for um, this uh, raw material, and that's what likelihood will push up the price again in the later stage stuff. Okay, so let's look at some global news to know what is actually happening right now. A quick one, give me a minute. Here we go. Okay, so first of all, right, what leads to the market uh, selling off, okay, just to inform you, is because of the bond inversion. When a bond yield inverted, right, people get freaked out, all right, and that is what happened. <clears throat> so when that actually happened, right, people feel that the economy is not going to do well. That's the reason why they decided to dump something that usually stimulates the economy or at least part of the economy, and that's crude oil. No, but of course, I feel that this selling is not just because of this reason. I think it's orchestrated to bring oil price of oil come down so that they can actually reduce inflation. But again, if you do it artificially, it's just a matter of time. Things may just come back to you again. So this is something that I felt in my opinion. All right. But again, definitely the inversion is happening right now. And uh, that is fear ongoing. As you can see, this market went down. I told you right back in April, there was this inversion. And it happened again. And you remember after April, it's all right. We have a May sell-off in the stock market, remember? Yes, correct. So that's how you can remember things, yeah? And of course, the moral security says that these major economies are headed for recession. 
So who are these company? I mean, who are these, right? Obviously, you can tell it's UK, Japan, South Korea, Australia, Canada. But the best part is this about Excel, which is US, okay? So US will definitely also face all this, but this company, these countries are there under US, right? We have more pressure, especially Japan. Now, Japan now have to increase their prices. I just saw on YouTube and this on Facebook that somebody want to sell them something has to increase by 10%. If not, it cannot even break even. Oh my goodness, 10%. Really, no kidding, yeah? Now, Credit Suisse basically is now slash S&P 500 targets down, but I still think that US is dodging a recession. So they are saying, yeah, no way. We will not have recession in America, but we will have to slash our S&P target. So to me, it's like uh, trying to be safer on both sides, yeah? So the target they are looking at from 4,009, which is a bit ridiculous, they say now 4,003. And in fact, right, last night, I was, you know, the day before I was outside, right, I was just talking to one guy, and it's on the bank, he said that, no, the numbers are actually a little bit lower. Said, wow, okay. Now, Euro has slid to the 20 years low against the dollar as recession builds fear. All right. The thing is this, I already told you, right, the problem with this whole going now is that you can see now the euro dollar is, it basically was at probably around, this, the current price is about 104, right? The time itself at 104 was all the way somewhere as December 20, 20, 2002. And I shared with you, the guys that, right, most likely the market, this euro will already be coming down. And truth be told now, it's coming down and it's a very good chance it may come all the way down to basically restart the whole thing. All right, this is my personal view on the Euro. So now the thing is this, because of all these things happening, right? Yesterday, crude oil tumbled up by 10%. Because why? Because of, there's a fear that the economic slowdown and the demand for petroleum product will go down. I tell you this, all this is really BS law. Now you can see the prices are all, the, the people are really wanting for it, they are queuing for it, right? All these things, right? This 10% pullback is very political. Uh, whatever it is, it does look political to me. But end of the day, you have to still pay the price because your reserve is drying up. So you're going to buy and buy at a higher price later. So to me, it's all right. You can do what you want now, right now. But as time goes by, right, you may need to pay the price. So the thing is this, Citibank recently have been very vocal and they start to tell you that they are expecting a lower number. Hey, wait a minute. I thought that JP Morgan yesterday said that the number will be 200 to 380, right? Some of the other houses say that Goldman Sachs says that it may be higher. So why the sudden change again? Why is that suddenly now we are now looking at a lower number? Well, Bank Citibank says that they expect it to go down lower and because it's going to be a recession, the demand will go down, therefore the, the crude oil will go lower. Now, if this is not Citibank, right, I will maybe have to take a note on this. But if it's Citibank, right, then I remember my history very well about how Citibank shorted crude oil and was slapped in the face and had to be stopped out later. Right, remember that? Okay, I'll talk about this later as well, right? Because um, I felt that this is like a comeback trade. And this comeback trade is more like a revengeful trade and I don't buy it as well. To me, it's that I felt that likelihood they are trying to just try to go again for their losses that they incurred previously. And then hopefully it's all right, people can leave and go through. For it to go down to $60, I can tell you this is really impossible because at the moment now, Russia is selling at $70 to $80. So unless, you know, that people are going to, we're going to twist the crowd to probably come back to US to do it, then fine. But then if that happens, it's all right. Yes, inflation may be going down, but that also makes make sense that it will actually create a lot of this uh, uh, energy companies uh, and they're going to suffer on that itself. So I, I can't really buy into this view here, but again, I'll talk about it later. And of course, obviously, Ray Dalio is a very happy man right now. Ray Dalio. Yeah, because... He had been shorting the market and now his uh, Bridgewater flagship fund is going up by 30%. Now, this is better than S&P 500, right? Definitely. So, of course, uh, he's a happier man compared to what he has. I think lost a lot of hair and we need some help on his face. <laughs> okay. All right. So, this fund is moving up very nicely, right? Last The last time it saw, right, the market was bad. So, this fund now is up by almost 32% as compared to S&P by, down by 19.9%. So this is a very good gain, all right? A very good gain, yeah? Okay, so this is something that, to tell you that which side should be on right now. Uh, those who is the right side should follow through. Okay, all right, that will be the news for today. All right, I've done that. Let's go into something extra now. It's the alternate market news. Now, at this segment is all right. I'm going to share with you some stuff that's not really found in mainstream media or at least not the way reported. 
So some of you may like it, some of you may not like it. So if you don't like it, the stuff you now switch off your screen for about 15 minutes, come back later and talk about the charts, okay? All right, just give me a moment. I've got some messages coming in. Okay, all right, let's go. Now, the thing is this, crude oil yesterday plunged to down to, a, to below $100, all right? So what happened is that, right, the Citibank guys are looking at maybe it go down to $60 to $65 per barrel. And in fact, he said next year, it will go to, next year, 2023, Citibank is saying that it may go down to $45. Oh, crap, $45? Serious? <laughs> so what, Russia there itself is what? <laughs> <laughs> I, I really want to laugh. Like, I mean, okay, everybody got their right to do any analysis, analysis and then after that, you know, showcase. But sometime in life, right, if you tell me something like this, it's really ridiculous. Okay, so at the same time, it's another company called Energy Expect says that no way, $80 to $90 is at best. In fact, it's all right. The price should go even higher later. So how, yeah? What do you think? Should now, okay, let's say now the crude oil, now crude is at, is at $98, okay? What do you think? Higher or lower in the next, in next three months? Okay, now crude oil now is at $98. Let's just share it out. What do you think? Do you think that crude oil will be higher or lower in the next three months? Everybody, give me your answer right now. All right, so for me, it's all right. My view is higher. My own view is higher. Yeah, I'll explain to you why in, in very short detail, but I want to see the consensus here right now. How many of you are actually looking at the market to be uh, higher or lower from now? Now it's $98, a very fair price, okay? Okay, let me read off your, your input here. Okay, uh, Karine says lower. Okay, fair enough. Yo says higher, Susan higher, Lionel higher, uh, Queen, Queen Ping also say higher. Louis actually more, uh, more, di more uh, distinctive, say that higher short term, all right? I mean, short term higher, yeah? Okay, uh, Richard also say higher, Janet, Higher. Okay, Judy say lower. Okay, there's two ladies now saying lower. Uh, Eric say higher. Um, this uh, Chuket say lower. And Louis say higher. Okay. All right. So we have more higher than lower, yeah? Okay, let me just give you my personal take once again. Huh? Danny say higher. Okay, first of all, let me explain this. The demand of crude oil will naturally be going up as the month progress because we're entering the summer period. This one is a very important economic 101, okay? Number two, if let's say inflation is really coming down lower, that means that cost itself has reduced, then it is better for the economy to bump, to dump this uh, step up to really start to produce, all right? So the demand for energy will still have to go higher. Now, at the same time itself, right, we do know that the Russia thingy is still not done yet and it's really highly dependent on whether G7 want to do what with Russia. So if any time G7 decided that they want to just boycott Russia, then the naturally the crude oil price will go higher, okay? Now, of course, at the same time, all right, if a recession is coming in, right, then the argument is that the oil consumption will be reduced, right, and the oil go brown lower, right, it is there, but I really cannot see anywhere <clears throat> below $90, in my personal opinion. If it goes out of 90, it just because it's slightly hood, it's a one time, like, you know, it came down and then recover immediately because that's how I see it. Okay, so for the who can has the only power to drive the price down so dramatically, it's either OPEC or it could be the US government because other than that, it's not right, no one can drive it down because the recession fear itself is still not confirmed yet and there's no real confirmation of recession. So there's no need to them to dump this unless it's actually for political reason. So I don't think this is actually real, 
But of course, everybody got their own view, but I want to tell you something. Now, do you know that why the crude oil prices recently have been going up? Because the primary reason that publicly traded oil producers are restraining growth despite the high oil price is because investors pressure to maintain capital discipline. So which means in short, it's all right. Why would I want to save the world by hurting my own interest? If I'm an investor of the oil producer, I'll tell the oil producer management to just take this quo so that every barrel of oil that I sell, I get the same figure. Now, if I want to save the world, I'll lose less, I'll, I'll lose money, right? Then as an investor, it's all right, I get pissed off. So the main reason is because up to 60% is due to the investors don't like it. And I think it made a lot of sense here as well. So this is why, and it's not really government regulation and uh, social or social media attack. I don't think so, really. This is something from the Dallas Federal Reserve itself. Why not I go and create myself one here? Okay, so think about this. If the price now is hundred dollars, so right, it has to be done by some organization who has really had the power to do that. Yeah. Okay. So that is where I'm gonna ask a question. Okay. Then if let's say crude oil is gonna go down to $45 or even $60 to begin with for this uh, uh city bank, then would that mean that OXY will go down all the way to like $35? Well, it is possible then. Then that means that Warren Buffett is very, very wrong. Hmm, okay. Now, Warren Buffett recently bought another uh, $584 million worth of the, of the OXY at about nearly 1 billion share, okay? His average price is $58.98. Eh? That means uh, if you today buy OXY below $58.98, eh, you're buying better than Warren Buffett, no? Yeah, yeah, that means that if you're buying any price below $58.98, right, you're buying better than Warren Buffett. Interesting, right? Okay. So the thing is this now, his average price is about $57 to $60. So again, I say this, if you buy any price below $56 today or tomorrow, you will buy below Warren Buffett price overall. Hey, that's a very, very good deal. So that's why I tell my students this, if you are going to buy some, some stocks to keep, if you really want to do that, then wait for it to go down to $42, to $44, to $45, then you buy some OXY to keep. Because my target itself is still $80. Of course, I can be totally wrong, but at least I got Warren Buffett now to be in front of me and he's buying more and buying more expensive in terms of average. You got my point. So it's like copy homework itself, right? Of course, you want to copy homework or copy the one that's smarter than me, better than me, more consistent than me, right? So that will give me a got much safer, right? Don't you agree with that? So once again, uh, the choice is yours. I will rather be looking at this counter in the near term, you know, my point, okay? All right, so that is how I see it for uh, OXY and crude oil. So if you cannot remember, let me bring you back now. Okay, apparently recently Citibank was shorting big time on crude oil and they were so confident that it will go down. And then what happened? They tell, they tell everybody, don't worry, I got stop loss at $92. And unfortunately, after a couple of days later, the crude oil really hit $92 and they had to be stopped out. So basically, right, this guy, uh, uh, Kash and Edward, he says that they are quite firm that there is a downside potential to come. And because of that, it's all right, you know, all these things. So to now, they're saying that, okay, they're shorted again. They this time around didn't give a target, but mathematically, it should be aiming for it, right? So the last time they did it, it's all right. The price was about probably $80, yeah. Okay, so just to give you the English version the from Barons, all right, one of, the, one of the Wall Street only best in the, in the market itself is actually Citibank. They expect a drop of 15, 18% to 20%. And that, my thing is this, because of that, right, nothing really happened. In fact, right, I have to argue with them regarding about the current situation with Russia, uh, this uh, Ukraine and other stuff. But of course, uh, when you want to do something, I can stop you, right? So all I can say is this, I, thought, I, I say, say this, all right? Um, I still think that Citibank is trying to pull a fast one to replace their losses that they had last year. So to me, it's all right. This is actually not going to be uh, expecting uh, the crude oil to go down to that level, unless I'm going wrong. Okay, unless that QD and Kareen has something that they have, they didn't tell us, so they can tell us why they think that the crude oil price is going down, yeah? Okay, now something off the topic of financial to go back to something extra on the side is this. Now, this is the tycoon, typhoon winds that's actually in around America. And of course, this is getting a little bit too close for comfort. 
So apparently it's not right. There are hay big winds that are coming into America. And of course, right, this is where it is. Okay. All right. So if this actually continue, if this continue, then of course there will be a potential of another mother nature problem. And if that's going to be that, the problem, then we may see things get disastrously uh, hit. And because of that, then obviously crude oil plantation will be triggered also. So that's the reason why I felt that it's better to protect your interest by logging a certain price rather than we negotiate and stuff like that. So why don't you just consider to do that for yourself, yeah? Okay. Big bear candle not eaten up yet. Oh, okay, understand. Okay, that's the technical point of view, yeah? Kareen, fair enough. So this thing is that whether or not the big wind will come and create a sort of storm that big, and all day, you just have to take note of that. Like, this is all the things that you don't get to see trainers covering. Yeah? Now, for me, this is how the chart looks like. You can see now very clearly that when the crude oil price in orange is going up, right, the Dow Jones also go up. Then, of course, recently, there was a bit of divergence where the crude oil goes up, the Dow Jones came down because it hit the point of too high. When anything that's above $100 or 104 to be precise, right, 104 it's getting too, too high and too expensive. But you can see that as the price of this going up itself, the price goes down, right? Now, recently, you can see this happening. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is this, right? Sometime in life, right, you need to use another person's uh, mouth to get something thing done. So to me, is that now, if the crude oil price is coming down, maybe, maybe the stock market may be able to go higher a little bit for more. So that, right, you know, we can see the cross movement here, okay? So there's something that I want to share with you to just take a look. So you can see now, right, the crude oil price and the, and, and the stock market price is going tandem. Nothing to do with cost, inflation. All these are all the Wall Street guys creating some nonsense of it. Only when things really get very difficult, and then they tell you, hey, you know what? Actually, they are inversely related. You block me, stuff like that. But you can look at it, it's right? They are very close together. And of course, I am very close all right, with my friend too, who is actually um, trying to read this view too. All right, so give me a minute. There's some PowerPoint issue. Just give me a short moment. Okay, so now the thing is this. There's this thing called the Atalanta Fed model. And this model uh, has been very accurate. You know that the, the in fact, it's all right, ever since it's uh, what it call is creation under two data, yeah, the yeah, chance of being wrong is less than 5%. So now the thing is this, you can see right now that they are expecting unemployment to stay at 3.7%, in PC 5.2%, call PCI at 4.3%. All these are very high number compared to what Farrow said, 2%, okay? Now the thing is this, you can see now crude oil coming down, right? So of course this number will be helpful. It will, it will be helpful for you to do your interaction. All right, but the thing is this, Dr. Doom, all right, Rubini, all right, Rubini, all right, came in and said that, no, 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 we are still at a halfway mark. There will be another potential 50%. Oh my goodness, I think this is a bit ridiculous, yeah? Right, Dr. Bloom, economist uh, Noriel Rubini says that stock could plunge another, another, not buy, is another 50% as the US hit towards a severe financial crisis, okay? All right, so once again, a lot of people are giving calls right now, but Rubini is all right, it's okay. But the one who talked about it is actually uh, some economists, okay, and they are looking at that. So just to check with you, uh, check with me, in fact, who is Rubini, right? If you don't know him, he is an, actually an Iranian-American economist. He teaches at New York University STEM, STEM, STEM School of Business and is chairman of Rubini uh, Marco, Macro. All right, this guy has been a talent. He has said correct. He has been spot on several times, okay? Just to give you a view of him. All right, he, build, he don't believe that there will be a soft landing. He believed that there will be a hard landing right to begin with. And also, he also think that, right, this recent last two week recovery is just only the last briefing space because the selling will come. Right, the thing is, he feel that now it's a combination of 1970 and 1980, 19, uh, 2000, 1970 and 2008 style debt crisis, which is tax to see whether will this become a big, big problem. Now the problem, the thing is this: this fact, uh, this uh, this global supply chain pressure index search up, right? And again, the thing is this: people are not buying into that. All right. So you can see right now, right? The global debt, right? Global debt is still rising up, while the percentage of the global debt that you guys took over the year, over the years, 
has steadily been paying more and more. So that's the reason why it's all right. There is a chance of a capitulation somehow, somewhere. So the last time was back in different parts. You can see now, right? If this company, this thing is not a capitulation, then just be careful. It will be a spike up itself, right? You just be careful. Okay. All right. Now, what is scary is that this Atlanta, um, this uh, GDP estimate has been very, very accurate, almost to the point of no wrong at all. So because of that, right, they are actually looking at this number to be at least minus 2.1%. That's very low for a business. But of course, some people say, oh, 2.1, never mind, they go. But of course, some people say that, oh, 2.1, dangerous, maybe you collapse soon. So majority of the uh, people who study this, they always say that this actually is actually telling me correct. But some people who don't see it, so right, don't feel it, I think that, okay, we are just around this area here. So you can see right now, right? This is the mean probability of the done by the exchange. I mean, by by the um, the Atlanta. So we can see that only in the later part then we can see some reprieve. Yeah. Okay. Now you can see right now, right? This is the S and P. All the top analysts, their view and forecast of the market. And of course, uh, looking at this itself, you can see that. Majority of them is looking at 4,500 on average, okay? Only one person actually gave a 5,300. That's crazy to the maximum. And also Mike Wilson gave a low number of 3,900. 3, so we have very crazy people like this one at 4,800 here and here and here. Okay, so a lot of people are doing 4,900, all right? So who are they? Let me just read for you. We have Brian from Mortally. Okay, Mortally is who? Uh, okay. Uh, 4009 from Credit Suisse. 4008 from Evercall. 4009 done by Morgan Stanley. Okay, then we have 3009 JP Morgan. This JP Morgan, sorry. And then after that, we have uh, Ocean, Ocean Heim. Send the show us Okay, so you can see that majority of them are looking at a higher number. But last check itself, right? Last check, yeah? The S&P 500, uh, where is it right now? The S&P right now uh, is trading at 38, 31 right now. 38, 31, okay? That is what's happening right now. So you can see that we are very, very far away. 600 points to 700 points before target. So I don't know how can we reach there, but maybe slowly and gradually, maybe. All right, that's what happened now. Let's share with you some facts and figures for you to digest and hopefully you can buy it, all right? So let's go now to the charts and let's go with, and the bull goes moo, the bag goes grrr, and the lemmingo is different this time, all right? So let's go, give me a moment. Yeah, in a moment, yeah, get some water. Okay, let's go. Okay, China A50, oh gosh, okay, this is bad, okay. Remember I told you about this figure yesterday, 15,000, 079, all right? Now this figure come from my indicator called KSL. Then this only is available from PTP level. That means that only if you join PTP, then you will learn this figure, how to get this number. And the accuracy, you can see for yourself that uh, we call for a cell right here. Okay, okay, can I really see the color, yeah? Uh, just put it up. Okay, we sell somewhere around here. And now the market is down by this much, okay? Now, the only thing is this, the downside had to, be, had to come down a bit more to really, you know, confirm this. So this particular level here, okay, won't be done by today. I don't think so. A couple of days later, I think there'll be 14,491. Okay, so if the market really come down 14,491, then of course, what happened is that uh, this will be the base that I think the market will form. Okay, at about 14,491, which will come first, yeah? Okay, so that's my view on China A50. So that will also give my view on the China Hong Kong market. Okay, so let's look at the 
Dow Jones today. Now the Dow Jones today has a very, very big BNB. All right, it's a very big one. This BNB actually stretched from the early this week, early last week, right, and down. Okay, so what happened is that now the upside potential is 32,139, okay? On the downside itself is 29,497. Hey, wait a minute. I thought that our 85 percentile is nearby. Yes, indeed, it's nearby. I'll show it to you shortly. So what I'm trying to say is that now to this is a DJDD. Now, a DJDD means that the market is directional day. If the market stays above OP, you know, today's OP is actually at 30,999. Oh, that's a good number. So which means that if the market is going to go down here itself, for example, it will be warm, definitely warm, and you're trying to make the impress, okay? On the same note itself, right? Okay, on the same note, okay, if the market stays above 30,997, there's a chance that the market can go up to 32,139 because that is the extension of the BNB, okay? So a bit, a bit of tough note though. At the moment now, MA30 is press, residing above it. So that means that it's very confirmed that uh, the selling is there. And if we're not going to do, you know, not to uh, apologize and stuff like that, then that, that will be like, right? Okay. So that is the S&P 500. This is Dow Jones, sorry. But the strong part is the KSI is green in color and it's uptick green. So likelihood is sell, right? This thing may not be that simple, yeah? So that's the reason why I felt that watch out for certain things. Only if the market breaks below low again, then we try to see whether can he break the pivot two. Now, if pivot two get broken, definitely we will know what to do. And then that's the next one will be all the way down to this point at 20, 29,497. Okay, so this is the first view that I have for the Dow Jones. Okay, so think on the better only if it comes down. Okay. Okay, let's look at the NASDAQ right now. The NASDAQ also is a BNB, interesting, but the NASDAQ is stronger. The NASDAQ now opening price is actually above pivot one. So by right above OP is a buy. And the MA30 is actually supporting it itself. So it's a very strong buy. And uh, the BNB is there. So the 12,219 is almost confirmed. All right. So this is something that if the market stays up, the KSI is green and there is a chance for the market going higher. If the NASDAQ stays up, the NASDAQ can go all the way to 12,219 level, okay? All right, so that is the NASDAQ. Of course, if the NASDAQ pull back, look out for MLP and the, and the big fish, all right? Make sure that you guys don't get eaten by each other, yeah? Okay, all right, next one. Oops, sorry, hold on. S&P 500 is a bit flat right now, a bit flat. S&P 500 is a KSI, is red in color, so it's a bit different. And uh, it's currently now resisted at the MA30. Can you see that? MA30 is 3847. The high itself is 38847. So this is how accurate is this system of ours. So how am I going to do this? I shall show you the charts then, the easier way. Mm. There are problem here as well. Pretty simple, straight away easier. Now you can see on SMP chart itself, right? SMP five hundred uh, came down, hit the MLP very nicely at thirty eight twenty three. And after that, recover all the way up again. Then we, we notice this 38.47 is the MA30, which you can see the market tap on it. And so the green dot was there. And after that, from there, it came back down. And again, at MLP, it's just starting around, right? So this actually spells how powerful is our system. Everything is all automated. You don't even draw a single thing. The numbers are all there itself. As long as the market comes down, if it gets supported, it will rebound. If it gets resisted, it will come down. And all these numbers are already on your screen once you join the TWB family, okay? 
Now, the thing is this, how would you know now, very simple, if the market stays above OP, I expect the S&P to go up again, back to 38, 47. But if the market really continue to go down, then my view is that it may come down all the way to 37, 98. Now, why would I say that to two numbers? Because at the moment now, that uh, is very flimsy, and from the here itself, right, the market can't even really go to KTR plus one. Now, I said before, right, if the market cannot go to KTR plus one, usually the market go down, and when you go down as well, it may be quite a bit. So I suspect that 3798 is actually a very possible figure for the S&P later. Okay, once you break below the MLP at 3823, 3798 is a very high possibility. Okay, all right, let's go. Let's go at the next market, which is Hong Kong. Now, Hong Kong today is quite interesting. Hong Kong, all right, Hang Seng. Hang Seng this morning, actually uh, get up. Then when it go up right, it touches MLP very nicely. And then once it fail to go above MLP, straight away it nose dive down, break below the fever and continue to go down and give me the MA30. So to me, it's, I'm very grateful because we just follow the color movement and we follow the KSI, good enough, okay? It was a down, great color down tick, right? So that means that the spying itself is still a bit there, but not yet. So how low can this go, right? The lowest I can think and go will be here, uh, maximum. Okay. 21,410, yeah? That's the number that we said earlier. I think that will be the good level for the market, okay? All right, 21,410. Now the upside is all right. If the market only, if the market break MLP, then you can go all the way up to 22,100, which I think will be very tough. Yeah, very, very tough. All right, so all these things is all right. I thought that politics runs the show. Okay, next market, DAX. Now DAX, I told you, will fall, right? And indeed, yesterday DAX continued to fall and it almost hurt his uh, 12,344. Now this morning, likely put, it will gap up, right? But if you gap up, if the selling continue, then I think coming up to one, two, three, four, four will be a good idea. Yeah, okay, so think about this. Huh? Now, Nikkei is coming off. Yesterday, we have a doji, then to this direction day. So you can see now that right, it's very, very clear that it's a doji, doji day. And, you know, the, what happened? So you can see, right, the view here. If you mean uh, something wrong on set. Okay, for the Nikkei now, right, you can see that it basically, basically touches MLP and pull back, but gets supported at the pivot one. If you look at it in a five minute chart, it'll be even clearer and better. You can take a look right now. Okay, so the Nikkei actually opens and it's stable MLP, right? Oops. But once it loses MLP and loses OP, right, it's a sell all the way. Do you understand? All right, it's a sell down all the way down to pivot one. But incredibly, pivot one and KTR minus two is a stack. Straight away, it rebounded it all the way up. But because of the MLP again, it shoot down, try again, stays up. So what's happening here is that, right, the, for the Nikkei, if you're shorting the market with some money, the long is sell, right, you're need money over here. But the question is this, didn't the, uh, when what happened after that? You can see that after this, Okay, after this is all right, the market basically come out with the bottom, a top part, and then the good friends basically start to sell and sell down all the way. But you can see when it's selling all the way, the market just know where to stop because this is the pivot. Pivot is a very powerful system of ours. Never, never fight the pivot. Yeah, we have seen this so many times already. Okay, so crude oil is the key point right now for everybody. Now crude oil, just a few days ago, everybody is calling for 120, 130, but today all came down to 110. Well, that's usual. Okay, let's talk about this one first. Okay, so first of all, right, for crude oil today, we have a problem because 99.80 is MA200, which I challenged it earlier, so early in the morning. So fortunately, right, I was allowed to uh, you know, do that. Okay, so what happened is I look at the chart, you understand this better, yeah? 
So what you can see on the chart is that the market opens, there was some sealed requirement, then done, done, done. Then what happened? When you hit to the 99 AP, the MA 200, that's why the dot, dot, dot come out, right? So if I tell you this, when you see a dot, dot, dot coming out, right, there's only two angles, either it could be a big upside or a big downside, right? And because what happened is that the when the crude oil price was going up, it's still right, I was having, you know, uh, telling people about this. So if you say, oh, maybe we should eat some more this uh, white rice up. So what happened is that the market actually didn't really go up. The market actually came down instead. So the market came down all the way after it touches the MA 299.80. Now this uh, thing is that, of course, uh, rational because of the recent, uh, the crude oil price, I told you about the recession potential. And also now the traders are now pretty lost to know that they can need buy and stuff like that. So likely the only resumption of demand for crude oil will only come in uh, tomorrow or next day. Yeah? So watch out for that. Okay, for gold, we have a bit of problem. I told you about gold. Right, gold is all right. Yesterday plunged, really plunged by a lot. From here itself, which is the BNB SL level, it just go down all the way to here at 17,900, uh, 17, you know, gold, 1791, okay, 1791. So it's the, the, the market 1791 have given, yeah, yesterday it try again and give one more time, but this time now it gave even more. Okay, so in short now for gold, if you ask me, right, at the moment now, it's going to be difficult to buy some gold because why? The two moving average is against you, it's below MLP. And more important thing is all right, the KSI, the blue wave, all of these are still there. And the likelihood itself will be making some noise. All right, to tell you that right, there could be a little bit more selling to come. So if they're going to selling to come, it's all right. I believe it will come down to 1753 to 59. 59 is just only a older folk, but 53 is the younger one. So 1753, if the market really do come down, 1753 will be the first support. All right. What's about that? 1753, which is about $15 from where we are now. Silver, as I said, silver will follow gold, and silver now has dropped all the way down, break the level. A new BMB is formed. So 1990 was already so considered given, yeah, but uh, it just went lower. So now if the thing goes lower and break 18.64, oh my God, that will bring the whole market down all the way to 17.99, okay? Then there will be a steal already. Okay, if ever silver do come down to below $18, that will be a steal, all right? So don't watch out for that. Anything below $18 for us now for silver is a delicacy, yeah? Okay, to go down all the way here, so 17.99. Last but not least, we have Bitcoin coming in. Now, Bitcoin is trying to find its base yesterday. Now, yesterday, it did a CCRY. So by right, there should be a follow through. But by 6.30 to 7 o'clock, there was no confirmation on anything. And now just replaced with the message said that we delayed. So this is going to spook the investors, right? So the thing is this, you can see that why the price really come down a lot because of two reasons. One is that uh, the, there is some losses that the market is coming down and now it's doing consolidation. If the market cannot stay up, the next wave is down, it's going to be down. And that's what 17,918, a level that we have seen it before. Okay. And uh, okay, then there was where by the so other inmates come and then tell you what to do, what you're going to do. Don't get frustrated. And that's when this is what happened. So now the thing is this for Bitcoin. If it comes down itself, right? Okay, in terms of Bitcoin, I still think that you'll come down to 17,918. My view, my like, Bitcoin view. So of course, only when that happened, then the NASDAQ will be coming down and so forth. If not, the market will still be relentless. It will be still sideways, as you can see right now. There's some recovery on the Dow Jones as I was speaking right now. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that will be all for Bitcoin and the thing. But before we go, I want to show something here on the other technical ground side first. Okay, so uh, just to let you know, because people have been asking me about my view on all these Dow Jones. Now, the Dow Jones on my view is that my KRW is still red in color, but today is a doji day. So the OP 30,999 is going to be a very important figure. So earlier itself, we saw it went up this morning, then now in the afternoon, it, went, it started to recover a bit. So it's kind of like, you know, dicey, don't know where to go, right? Okay, that is expected, yeah? 
So let the market confirm the site and then go with the flow. At the moment now, there's no trade temporarily. Okay. Next, you can see that the KRW is red, but the KSI is green. So that means that there's still be buying. That's why whenever the price goes down, the buying came in, all right? For the NASDAQ, right, the KRW is red, but the KSI is green. That's why, again, the upside is still pretty strong for time being. S&P 500 is totally different, yeah? S&P 500, take a look, everybody. S&P 500, you can see that the KSI is still red and the BNB is still red. So, I mean, KW is red, the KSI is red. So that means that there should be selling pressure. So once if the S&P breaks down, likelihood there will be some selling, okay? Likelihood there will be some selling, okay? Now for Hang Seng itself, right? You can see both are red. So that's why the selling pressure is there for DAX. Uh, we have the KRW red, but the KSI is green. So that's why the tail at the back. Nikkei, right? Nikkei itself, right? The boys are still buying, but the, internally the selling has begun. The market is shaking, okay? And crude oil, do you want to know crude oil? Crude oil now, both sides is green. No, but the both side is red. So that means that the buying itself is going to be difficult. So sell will be better, okay? All right, so that is the my PDP chart. But what is something else I'll share to you is this one here. The Dow Jones itself, right, is still fairly away from the target we say mentioned earlier. So just leave it alone. Just uh, let me know about their views on the, the 80% part. At the moment now, we still have any uh, entry yet, yeah? And the NASDAQ is definitely way, way, way below the 80% mark, definitely for sure, okay? S&P 500 is now lingering around the 80% mark. So watch out for this. If the market go back to 38.55, there'll be some recovery. If we fail, like yesterday, the high of the day was incredible. The high was 38.55. You know, yesterday, the S&P 500, uh, the day high of S&P 500 was exactly 38.55. So when the market hit that, immediately came down. Very interesting phenomenon, yeah? Okay. And of course, um, just to let you know a little bit more. Okay, let's give me a minute. This is the VIX right now, and the VIX is uh, still pretty sideways for the last six, seven days. So it's also waiting for a bigger open to come, okay? A bigger open to come. And of course, for my KR, KFC, it was brilliant. My KFC tells me about my the technical level to watch out for. And of course, uh, you can see that how, how crazy is this? Okay, so straight away, you can see that the market now is firming nicely over here. So as long as the NASDAQ stays above the 11,380, uh, it's gonna be very difficult. So 11,380 is a very important pivotal point. As long as the NASDAQ stays above it, there is still upside. But once the NASDAQ goes below 11,380, right, there will be heavy selling, okay? I say up front first, there will be heavy selling if the NASDAQ really dropped below 11,380. This is gonna be very crucial. And um, likelihood is all right, the one that will trigger this will likely be Bitcoin, yeah? If that is gonna be happening later, later on. Okay, and for my long-term chart itself, we can take a look. My long-term chart still showing that we are on sideway track. This is like the next BNB and the second BNB of this month. All right, so that means that likelihood we will see directional movement soon. Now, of course, directional movement can be these two ways. So let us see whether which way the market will go. But nonetheless, it's all right. So to this doji direction, way, follow the OP, you should be fine. Okay, that will be all for today. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I wish you all the best for your trading. And I will see you guys on Friday. And hopefully by then, it's all right. We have something more to share and more money have to be made. Okay. This is Cal signing off. Bye-bye.